Uh, I have just attached the link of the attendance form for all of you to fill up. Uh, please find the link uh, of the form in the chat box with the class code. You can fill it up now before we start the class. Okay, uh, there are still uh, two more students haven't filled up the form. I am not sure who uh, haven't filled up. And then uh, as I see the numbers here, I see that maybe uh, one or two students uh, haven't joined the class. Okay, but uh, I will not wait uh, for all to fill up because most of you, you have filled up. Okay, and now I think I can start the class. Okay, today I will start a new chapter, chapter 2, uh, that is about uh, fabrications, okay, CMOS fabrication process and also laid out design and as well as uh, the computer added tools, okay. All of the notes I have uploaded to all of you in Google Classroom, okay. If you have not download, you can go and download and refer on yourself.
Okay. Uh, before I um, start with the CMOS fabrications, I will uh, give a recap on the CMOS uh, technology. Okay, CMOS technology is one of the IC technology. Okay, uh, I have mentioned before IC technology. There are a few I uh, a few technology that can, we can use to. Uh, construct and design the IC. Okay. Uh, in the first chapters, the technology of IC are the bipolar technology, BJT. Okay. And then also the bi CMOS. Okay. Bi CMOS technology and CMOS technology. Okay. These are the three uh, most popular IC technology. Okay, so I will give a very short overview okay, before I go to the fabrication process. Okay, uh, for this chapter 2, this is the outline. Okay, uh, the first uh, one is uh, the CMOS technology uh, that is about the introductions to CMOS technology. Okay, and then an overview of the CMOS fabrications. Okay, and then uh, wafer formations and photolithography. Okay, uh, this is part of the uh, fabrication process. Okay, uh, wafer for formations is about to preparing the wafer, okay, to construct the IC on the wafer. And then photolithography is a process, process that use the mass uh, to form a pattern on the wafer to form the uh, circuit, okay, in the chip okay and then well and channel formations gate and source drain formations contacts and metallizations they are also the processes that are involved in the fabrications okay so uh, before we uh, fabricate the ic of course we need to produce the layout design okay the layout design need to be verified using the layout design rules Okay, so this also will be covered. Okay, today uh, we have two hour lecture class. Okay, so uh, I will cover all this in these two hours. Okay, if I have enough time, uh, I uh, will cover layout design rules. If I will not have time to cover today, then I will cover this uh, next week. Okay, so... Uh, as introductions uh, to these chapters, uh, silicon IC technology can be classified into types, for example, bipolar, metal oxide, semiconductor, and bi CMOS. Okay, uh, metal oxide semiconductor MOS is further classified into different technology under P MOS, N MOS, and C MOS. Okay, so in these chapters, the technology that will be focused is CMOS technology, okay, it's a CMOS technology. Uh, later, I will cover on uh, how to fabricate the CMOS uh, inverter, okay, CMOS inverter that also included uh, the PMOS transistor and MOS transistor. The most popular MOSFET technology available today is the CMOS technology or complementary MOS technology. Okay, so this complementary MOS technology uh, stands uh, for CMOS, okay? Uh, CMOS is a short form, okay? Uh, we uh, almost, uh, 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 we uh, always call it CMOS, okay? And then this CMOS uh, is actually the means by the complementary MOS technology, which this technology make use of the NMOS and PMOS transistor to construct uh, the logic gate in the circuit. Okay, CMOS technology is the leading semiconductor technology for ASIC memories and microprocessor. Okay, ASIC here means by the application specific integrated circuit or integrated chips. Okay, it means that a chip that is designed and fabricate uh, to perform a specific applications. The main advantages of CMOS technology, 
over bipolar and and most technology are high noise immunity and low static power consumption as when the circuit is switched then only the power dissipates this allow a high density of CMOS gate to perform logic functions on an integrated circuit than in bipolar and NMOS technology. CMOS technology uses a symmetrical pairs of P-type and N-type metal semiconductor field effect transistor for logic functions. Okay, this uh, is the figure 2. Okay, figure 2 is the examples of a CMOS inverter. Okay, we call this is the schematic diagram of a CMOS inverter. Okay, why it is CMOS inverter? Because uh, there is a BMOS and NMOS. And then uh, this circuit, uh, the behavior is it behave like the uh, inverter or sometimes we call it as no logic gate. Okay, so according to this diagram, uh, how, do we, how do we interpret it? How do we interpret this circuit as the inverter? Okay, um, okay. Now let's have a look. Okay, for this um, uh, CMOS uh, circuit, okay, usually they must have a uh, supply voltage VDD. Okay, uh, supplies voltage VDD to the source of the PMOS. Okay, so I will label here. Okay, you try to uh, pay attention. Okay, to what I'm saying here because uh, this is important. Uh, later, uh, the next chapters and topics all is about this. Okay, you will learn how to uh, draw, you will need to learn how to draw the schematic diagram and layout diagram. Okay, so uh, you need to understand what is the diagram, or what is this diagram about and then how to uh, design and draw the uh, the CMOS uh, circuit. Okay, so uh, so this is the source source terminal. Okay, source terminal of PMOS always connect to the VDD. Okay, and then uh, we call this as S. Okay, and then this is another terminal of PMOS. Okay. This is the drain terminal. Okay, and then uh, for NMOS, NMOS, the source terminal of the NMOS will always connect to the VSS. Okay, here VSS is actually the ground. Okay. This is the ground, and then another terminals of NMOS. This is the drain, okay, drain terminal. So you see that the drain terminal for PMOS and NMOS they should connect to the Q. Q is the output. Okay, I change the color here. Okay, and A, A is connected to the gate, okay, gate of both transistor. So A, we call it as the input voltage. Okay, the transistor must connect to the supplies voltage, VDD, in order to operate, okay, and also ground. Okay, but its operations is depends on the input voltage as well. Okay, uh, um, okay so uh, just now what I mean is uh, the supplies voltage is to ensure that the transistor can work. Okay, can work uh, based on the input voltage. So uh, for this circuit, okay, when the... Okay, so here there is a label here already. Okay, okay, so when the input is
Okay, so when the input is zero, so refer to this one. Okay, this is the input. The initial input is zero, then the output will be one. Okay, uh, the output is uh, inverted, okay, based on the input voltage. Okay, and then if the input is one, then the output will be zero. Okay, this is the logic zero and one. Okay, if it is a voltage, okay, so for logic zero, we consider it as a low voltage. Okay, for logic one, we consider it as high voltage. Okay, if let's say the range of the input voltage is between 0 to 5, then high voltage we consider it as a 5 volt, low voltage we consider it as a 0 volt. Okay, so this is how we interpret the input and output. Okay, and then uh, it, we can translate this uh, schematic diagram okay, into a layout diagram. Okay, um, this one I will uh, cover later. Okay, uh, how to do that? Okay, uh, not difficult, but uh, you need to learn. Okay, after you learn, uh, you will be able to master. Okay, so there is another diagram here. Okay, this diagram, we call it as a cross sections of two transistors in simul circuit. Okay, this is actually a 2D uh, diagram uh, from side wheel. Okay, uh, uh, the wheel here is, uh, we can see that there is two transistors here. Okay, this is NMOS. Okay, this is NMOS. This part, okay, this part is NMOS. And this part is PMOS. Okay, uh, and then uh, each of these transistors, there are three terminals here. Source terminal, gate terminal, and drain terminal. Okay, and then source and drain terminals, they are connected to this uh, P-type uh, area. This is a p-type active area, okay, and then with the gate here, okay, and then for NMOS, the source and drain are connected to this n-type active area, okay, sometimes we call it as a diffusion area, okay, and then p subtract, okay, p subtract is a, a subtract, okay, uh, that has a p dupen, okay, and uh, uh, this sub subtract sometimes we call it as body. Okay, we call it as body, and then uh the material of this subtract is uh always uh the silicon. Okay, in the industrial uh they use the silicon uh as the substrate uh to build uh IC on it. Okay, so uh. They will be uh, the processor, processors that will be shown to you uh, how to uh, fabricate the transistor on the silicon substrate. Okay, silicon lattice. Okay, now I will cover what is the elements uh, of the material that are used uh, to fabricate the IC. Okay, so for this slide, it is actually about uh, the material that is used as the wafer to build the circuit uh, on the uh, to build the circuit uh, in the chip okay uh, on silicon wafer okay um, the chip itself is actually built on the silicon wafer okay in the chip they are uh, circuit okay they are circuit okay so a transistor are built on a silicon substrate okay silicon uh, is a semiconductor forms the basic that starting material for most integrated circuits. Silicon is a group four material which forms a crystal lattice with bond to four adjacent atom. Okay, this is figure three. It shows the uh, lattice, the silicon lattice. Okay, uh, it means the this, this is the atoms. Okay, all of these are atom. Okay, this is atom, and then 
each of these silicon atoms, they have four bonding. These are the bonding. Okay, so if you see this atom, this atom, it is bond to the adjacent four atom. Okay, so that's why here they are four bonding. Okay, so silicon is a group four material. Okay, with four bonding. Okay, and then um, we also use other elements as dopant. Okay, the elements here uh, that we use is uh, group three and group five. Okay, so what is uh, that mean? Uh, okay, so you can read from the slide here. Okay, as all of the valence electrons in silicons are involved in chemical bonds, pure silicons has no free carriers and conduct poorly. The conductivity can be raised by introducing small amount of impurities called dopants into the silicon lattice. Group 5 dopants, for example the arsenic, has five valence electrons. It replaces a silicon atoms in the lattice and still bond to four nearby so that the fifth valence electron is loosely bound to the ascending atom. Thermal vibrations of the lattice at room temperature is enough to set the electron free to move, leaving a positively charged ascending ion and a free electron extra electrons. The free electrons can carry current so the conductivity is higher. Okay, this is called as n-type semiconductor because the free carrier are negatively charged electrons. Okay, what uh what is mean by this uh, slide is uh, okay for a group 5 dopants, it is always uh, used as a dopants uh, to um to add the impurity. Okay, uh, to the uh, silicon. Okay, uh, to the silicon. Okay, uh, this group five. Why we use group five dopant because it has five valence electrons. Okay, silicon um does not conduct well. Okay, here already mentions it conduct poorly because of no free carrier. Okay, but group five dopant. It has five valence electrons, means that uh, the additional electrons, okay, there is one addi additional electrons are free to move. Okay, these uh, extra electrons uh, with uh, the characteristic of uh, free movement can actually allow uh, a better conductivity, okay, in the material. Okay, so... Here already mentions the free electrons can carry current, so the conductivity is higher. Okay, and with the extra electrons, uh, we call it as a n-type semiconductor. Okay, because the free carrier are negatively charged electron. Okay, so means that if we want to um, have a n-type semiconductor or n-type diffusion area, we want to infuse uh, an area with more n-type. Okay, so we can use the group 5 dopant okay, to uh, dupe it in the silicon wafer. Okay, there is another group. Uh, group 3 dopants. Okay, this group 3 dopants is uh, the boron. Okay, this is boron. Okay, this uh, dopant has three valence electrons. Okay, the dopants atoms can borrow an electrons from a neighboring silicon atom, which in turn becomes short by one electrons. Okay, this means that uh, for group 3 dopants boron, okay, it has only 3 electrons. means that another 1 electrons, uh, we 
uh, the another one electrons need to borrow from the adjacent silicon atom. Okay, uh, short of one electrons means that it is um, with missing one electrons. So the dupens atoms need to borrow an electron from a neighboring silicon atoms. Okay, so the missing electrons, we call it as hole. Hole acts as a positive carrier forms a p-type semiconductor. Okay, so uh, the uh, figure is given here, figure 4, show the group 5 and group 3 dupens atom. Okay. okay, so this is acenic, acenic, uh, this is group 5. Okay, group 5. Dupen, so means that there is an extra electron. Okay, these electrons are free to move. So it uh, move to the adjacent atom. Okay, so one uh, electrons are moving freely. That's, uh, uh, that actually uh, we uh, they, uh, that actually uh, here as you see that plus uh, we can actually assume that this is the missing electrons. Okay, after it is uh, moved freely to the adjacent atom. Okay, so for this, we call it as a p-type duping. Okay, p-type duping, and then and for this is the boron. Okay, boron is a three uh, a group three is a group a group three dupens, and uh, these electrons. Is actually borrow a uh, borrow from this adjacent silicon atom. Okay, so this is the missing hole because uh, an electron is borrowed from these silicon atoms. So that's why you see that this is a negative charge, and then uh, this is the process of uh, we call it as a p-type doping. Okay, uh, this is the periodic tables of the elements. Okay, for group 3, 4, and 5, this is a group 3 elements. Okay, to use as a dupen. Okay, so as you see that uh, group 3 elements, not only boron, they are uh, aluminium and gallium. Okay, um, okay so these elements here, uh, we also need to check whether uh, the properties, the electrical properties allowed or is it suitable so, to be used uh, as a dupens uh, for uh, constructing the chip. Okay, and then for silicon, Silicon uh, in group 4, not only silicon, germanium, and other more, okay, but uh, the most popular one that uh, that I use is uh, the silicon. And for group 5, uh, arsenic, nitrogen, phosphorus, okay, all these elements are also in group 5, okay, but arsenic uh, is used, okay, uh, for other elements here, I cannot tell much because I didn't go and research, okay? Okay, uh, PN junctions, okay? PN junction is a diode, okay? When we form a PN junctions, okay? Uh, it forms a diode, okay? Uh, a diode allow only uh, the current, allow the currents to flow only in one direction. Okay, so this one um, is given, okay, the, the figure also given. Okay, why uh, this PN junction is mentioned here? Because uh, when we fabricate the transistor, there are P-type area and N-type area. Okay, uh, so when there are P-type and N-type area, uh, then a diode will be formed. Okay, I will refer back to this diagram. Okay, this diagram. Okay, you see that this diagram, there is an N-type. This is P-subtract. So, 
Oh, there is actually a diode here. We can consider that there is a diode here. Okay, because the area in between is with different uh, types of tupen. Okay. So uh, with this, uh, we can uh, know that uh, the directions of the currents flow. Okay, and then um, this allow uh, the a transistor to operate well. Okay, uh, most technology uh, is about the CMOS circuit, okay, that I have shown you just now. Okay, a uh, most structure is created by superimposing several layers of conducting and insulating materials to form a sandwich-like structure. Manufacturers using a series of chemicals processing, steps involving oxidizations of the silicon, additions of selective dopants and depositions and etchings of metals, wires, and contacts. Transistors are built on single crystal silicon. Okay, so again, uh, this is the uh, CMOS uh, circuit. Uh, let me see. Okay, this is not CMOS circuit. This is actually the uh, NMOS transistor. Okay, NMOS transistor. Okay, how do we know it is NMOS transistor? Okay, we actually see this, the diffusion area. What is the type of this diffusion area? This is N-type. Okay, so this is N-type. That's why uh, we call it as a MOS transistor. Okay, for every transistor, uh, must have three terminals. Okay, as you see here. So this is the gate electrode to get electrode, and then this gate is made of the polysilicon metals. Okay, and drain, drain and source here. This terminal are made of the metal. Okay. Now uh, I will mention further about uh, the operations of NMOS and PMOS. Okay, CMOS technology provides two types of transistors, NMOS and PMOS. Okay, transistors operations is controlled by electric field so the devices are called as metals, oxide, semiconductor, field effect, transistor, or simply fats. Okay, so these two are the NMOS and PMOS transistors. Okay, so you see that uh, this is the, uh, the symbols for NMOS and this is the symbols for PMOS. Okay, for PMOS, remember that uh, there is a bubble here. Okay, so the bubble here shows that uh, the operations of PMOS is uh, invert. Okay, is the inversions of the MOS operations. Okay, for NMOS transistor, there are four terminals, gate, source, then body. Okay, here given is four terminals because uh, the body, body is included here. There's another terminals for body. Okay, and then gate and body are conductors. Silicon oxide is a very good insulator. Okay, silicon oxide is actually this. This is silicon oxide. Okay, uh, it is an insulator. Okay, and then uh, sometimes we call n-type transistor as metals, oxide, semiconductor, capacitor. The gate is a control input. It affects the flow of electrical currents between the source and drain. Body is commonly tied to ground. When the gate is at a low voltage, P type body is at a low voltage. Okay, source body and drain body diodes are off, no current flow, transistor is off. Okay, so this is NMOS when the uh, gate 
is low voltage can mean that uh, this is uh, logic zero. Okay, when the gate is with low voltage, okay, it means that NMOS is off. Okay, when NMOS is off, it also means that there is no current flow in between source and drain terminals. Okay, when the gate is at a high voltage, positive charge on gate of on uh, on gate of most capacitor, negative charge attracted to region under the gate, invert a channels under gate to end type. Now currents can flow through n type silicons from source through channels to drain transistor is on okay so uh, according to the figure here i use the figures to explain this okay when the gate is at high voltage okay so there will be a positive charge accumul accumulate okay on the gate okay so this is the gate and with the uh, positive charge okay and then uh, this positive charge will attract the negative charge to the gate towards the gate uh, okay so uh, we call it a region under gates okay and here uh, there is a negative charge here so a channel is formed Okay, a channel is formed under the gate to p. Uh, sorry, to n type, and now the currents can flow. Okay, the currents can flow through n type silicons from source through channels to drain. Okay, so here this is the source. This is drain. So the currents will flow. Okay, so when there is a current. Current flow so means that the transistor is on. Okay. So we can interpret in another way is when the uh, the input okay is one, then transistor is on, then the output 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 will change. Okay, the output uh, of the circuit will change. Okay, for PMOS, PMOS has the similar operations, okay, but the duping and the voltages reverse, okay. Um, okay, uh, PMOS, the behavior, just now I mentioned, uh, the behavior of PMOS is, uh, in, uh, is a little bit different, okay, uh, not exactly the same, okay, the behavior here we, uh, is actually inverted, Okay, inverted behavior. Okay, uh, means that uh, for a uh, PMOS to operate, the input must be low for the PMOS to operate. Okay, and then uh, PMOS will turn off when the input is high. Okay, this is different than the MMOS. MMOS will only operate when the input is high. Okay, so um, both of the transistors here they operate uh differently uh, based on the input voltage. Okay, the difference here is uh it operates only when uh the voltages are in different level. Okay, but same operations. Okay, uh, but uh they are of the same operations as a switch. Okay, but they operate. At different uh, voltage level. Okay, so for these PMOS transistors, uh, the structure is almost uh, similar to the MO. Okay, uh, there are also four terminals if we consider the body as uh, one of the terminals. Okay, the body is tied to high voltage. Okay, and then when the gate is low, transistor is on, and when the gate is high, the transistor is off. Okay, bubbles indicate in inverter behavior.
Okay, so uh, here shows that uh, when there is a high, uh, not high, there is a low voltage. Okay, there is a low voltage and the uh, charge here will gather together uh, at the gate and also the region under the gate. Okay, so they attract each other and then when there is a channel that is formed between the terminal source and drain terminals, so means that there is a current flow in between. So when the current there is a current flow, then uh, the transistor will turn on. Okay, power supply. Power supply here is about the VDD, uh, supplies voltage. Okay, for ground, uh, the value is always a zero volt. Okay, and for the uh, VDD, VDD the uh, value. Of VDD is normally five volt. Okay, VDD has increased in more. Uh, sorry, VDD has decreases in modern processors. High VDD would damage modern tiny transistors. Lower VDD save power. So the VDD can be uh three point three volt, two point five volt, one point eight volt, one point five, one point two, and one point zero. Okay, when we design or we choose the supply voltage, we need to consider that the VDD cannot be too high or cannot be too low, okay? Because uh, uh, high voltage can damage the components, okay? And then also we need to see the complexity of the circuit. If the VDD is very low, it may not be able to supply the power to all the circuit. Okay, so now so it goes to the CMOS verification process. Okay, so uh, the first step uh, in the fabrication process of a CMOS IC is the wafer formations. Okay, wafer formations means, means also the preparations of the silicon wafer. Okay, uh, all the CMOS transistors are fabricated on silicon wafers. Uh, can you all still hear me there? Okay, I see my... Yes. Oh, okay. Because I see my computer, my another computer, the connection is lost. So I want to ensure that here... Uh, okay, uh, if you still can hear me, then continue. Okay, a wafer. A wafer is a thin slice of semiconducting material such as a silicon crystals upon which uh, micro circuits are constructed by duping, for example, diffusions of ion implantations, etching, and depositions of various material. Wafers are cut off of a silicon uh, bills. Okay, a bill is a, a bills is a si single crystal silicon from which Waffles are cut using the diamond saws. Okay, uh, there is a short video here. Okay, I want to show you this uh, uh, short video uh, because it shows the overall process uh, of how the IC is fabricated. Okay, using the advanced technology uh, in the machine. Okay, so uh, please try to pay attention to what is presented in this short video because it will give you the concept, okay, uh, about the uh, all the steps uh, that is covered in the fabrication process.
Microprocessors, they have become indispensable in our modern world and can only be produced in clean rooms under the most stringent of conditions. Sand is the basis for most microprocessors, which has a high silicon content, but also contains other elements such as oxygen and calcium. Through heating and other processes, silicon is extracted from sand and cast into blocks. Such a block has a high level of purity and is called ingot. The block is cut into wafers of the desired thickness of anywhere from 0.5 to 1.5 millimeters, depending on their intended use. The wafer is then polished and subject to rigorous inspection. If the wafer passes the subsequent inspection, the first step of production begins, which is called front end of line. Here, the integration of transistors takes place. In the first step, a layer of silicon dioxide is laid down on top of the wafer, upon which a layer of silicon nitride is applied. Then, a very thin coating of photoresist is applied. A spin coating technique is typically used to spread the photoresist over the surface. In the next step, a prefabricated stencil composed of transparent glass and opaque chrome is projected onto a lens. The lens reduces the size of the stencil pattern. The photoresist becomes soluble wherever it is exposed to UV light. The dark areas here indicate the regions that are to be removed. These can be removed through the application of an appropriate solvent. Let's look at the surface a little bit closer now. The solvent uncovers part of the silicon nitrate layer which lies beneath the photoresist. The application of corrosive liquids etch away the desired regions of the other layers in order to expose the silicon. Finally, the cleaning of the photoresist and a further chemical etching of the silicon regions. Another layer of silicon dioxide is then applied, which will serve as insulation between the transistors. Etching and grinding processes expose the silicon underneath. Photolithography is used once again in the process of doping the silicon regions for the purpose of protecting the regions which are not to be doped. The silicon regions are treated with either N or P-type doping through ion implantation. This example is one of an N-type doping. The photoresist can finally be removed. Looking at the doped regions, it can be seen that the implanted electrons are able to move freely and thus are able to carry electrical current. Finally, the creation of the gate dielectric, in which photoresist will be used to make source and drain areas through the implantation of foreign atoms. This is the fundamental structure of transistors. At this point, the front end of line is completed. From here, the back end of line begins. The back end of line begins with the application of undoped silicate glass in which holes for connection purposes are created. These will then be filled with tungsten and the electrical connections between the transistors will be created. The end result is a wafer full of chips which will be separated from each other using a saw and then embedded in a housing.
Through the process of bonding, the chip is attached to the contacts within the housing. A housing cover serves as protection from external elements such as dust. The processes shown in this animation are greatly simplified. The production of a microprocessor can require more than 100 individual process steps and can last for many weeks. Today, a simple microprocessor can contain several billion transistors. Okay, so I hope that uh, the short video can give you the overall information uh, and then the, uh, the uh, some uh, imaginations to you uh, on how the fabrication process are uh, done. Okay, so now I go to the PowerPoint and uh, go back to the PowerPoint. Yeah, you can always uh, watch back the uh, short video because the link has already given there and also there is an embed embedded uh, video in the PowerPoint slide that I've given to you. Okay, so you can watch back if you are still, you still cannot uh, get all the, uh, the, the information uh, from the video. Okay, so uh, just now has already shown you how the chip is uh, manufactured. Okay, so the uh, the chips that is on the silicon wafer, okay, there are many chips there. Okay, and then um, it looks like the uh, pictures here in this slide. Okay, so all these uh, are chips. Okay, so uh, when all these chips are ready, they can be uh, placed uh, in the, uh, just now you see that the, uh, we can package it. This chip we can package it, okay, and then uh, we can sell out, okay, in the market, okay. So, uh, the um, uh, size of the wafer, uh, the silicon wafer matters, okay. Uh, if uh, the larger size of a silicon wafer is used, means that the production loss can be decreased, okay. So this one I am not sure what is the size, okay. Uh, this uh images, uh this image, okay, this image I actually get it from this website okay uh, you can actually uh go to this web website okay so i will directly go to this web website now uh, to show you what is the information given in this article okay so if you have time you you can go to this website to have some read okay this is about uh what it, this is about uh uh the uh in, uh, the information the informations of the wafer is given in this website. Okay, what is wafer building and ingot the foundations for wafer? Okay, so this one is easy to understand. You can uh, read yourself. Okay, uh, okay, I actually want to uh, expand on these uh, pictures here. Okay, uh, these pictures, uh, this is all the uh, chips on the silicon wafer. Okay, so the number one here as shown here, this is this is a chip, a tiny piece of silicon with electronic circuit patterns. Okay, you cannot see, I see, I think, because it's too small. The the uh, words here. Okay, this is better. Okay, and then number two here. This is number two. Number two, they, if there is a line, okay, in between the chips, okay, this line we call it scribe lines. It is thin and non-functional space between the functional pieces, where a saw can safely cut the wafer without damaging the circuits. Okay, so in the video you can see that the chip can be cut, okay, to smaller uh to smaller size uh, depends on uh, the uh, the size of the chip here okay it can be cut so the line here is reserved 
for the saw, uh, for uh, is reserved to be cut by the saw. Okay, and then uh, the number three here, number three, this is also shows uh, in between the uh, in between the chips. Uh, there is the line here. Okay, uh, this is the test elements group, a prototype patterns that rewinds the actual physical characteristic of a chip. Okay, for example, the transistor, capacitors, resistors, diodes, and circuit, so that it can be tested to see whether it works properly. Okay, so means that uh, using um, okay in a specific part uh, the um, circuit can be tested. Okay, the testing uh, the circuit can be tested whether it can work well. Okay, and then the H die uh, H die H die here is number four. H die here this is the H die. Okay, the dies around the edge of a wafer consider production's loss. Okay, largest wafer would relatively have less chip loss. Okay, so we try we have to try to minimize uh, uh, the um, uh, the area that is left out at the edge of the die. Okay, because uh, if this area here at the edge, uh, the left up area is large means that the loss will be higher okay so the area at the edge here need to be minimized so so that to minimize the production's loss okay and then the flat zone okay number five here means the flat zone this is one edge of a wafer that is cut off flat to help identify the wafer orientations and type Okay, so uh, this is the definitions uh, on the on this image. Okay, for the number given on the image here. Okay, uh, this uh, the slide. This is the slide that lists out all the basic steps. Okay, lists up all the basic steps in CMOS fabrications. Okay, so all the steps here, uh, you can see clearly. Okay, the first step uh, is to prepare the wafer. Okay, so this is the silicon wafer. We can call it as a silicon substrate. Okay, and then um, oxide uh, is placed Oxide layers is placed on top of the silicon substrate. And then, um, as you see that this is the layers of the oxide. Okay, sometimes we call it, uh, we grow the oxide. Okay, and after that, the next step is to apply photoresist. Okay, so in the short video, uh, the photoresist, Okay, it is a, a chemical okay, that is applied on the oxide layers okay, so that uh, the photolithography process can be done okay, uh, through the use of the mask. Okay, so this is the photoresist. Okay, after apply photoresist, then... Uh, we can use the mask. Okay, this is the mask. Okay, this mask is with different pattern. Okay, this mask is with different pattern. And then some of the area are exposed. Okay, uh, this is the exposed area. This is the exposed area where the UV light will be applied. And then it will dissolve the photoresist here. Okay, after dissolve the photoresist, then it can be removed e easily. Okay, we call this process as the um, etching. Okay, uh, just now I say is um, when we remove the photoresist or we want to remove something uh, after the uh, after applying uh, after exposing the area to the UV light, we call it as a etching. Okay. So then, you uh, in this uh, figure, okay, in this uh, 
figure, there is a uh, steps here exposed to UV light. Okay, so this is the UV light. Okay, this UV light is applied to the mask and then some of the exposed area here, okay, is exposed to the UV light. Okay, and then in this part, this area will be etched. Okay, so you see that in these uh, steps here, the middle area here, after edge, it is look like this. Okay, and then uh, after this area is being edged, then we can actually apply the dupens onto the silicon substrate. Okay, after the uh, dupen is applied, okay, means uh, uh, we want to uh, create a diffusion area. Okay, uh, then we need to uh, dupe it with uh, group 5 or group 3 dupens. Okay, so after we have created it, the diffusion area will look like this. Okay, this is uh, the area where we call it as a dupe area or diffusion area. Okay, so this is the basic steps that you should know. Okay, there are further uh, elaborations on these uh, steps, all the steps here. Okay, you also can refer. Okay, um, before I further describe all the steps given, um, here there is a process uh, called as a photolithography process. Okay. In uh, the fabrication process, each uh, processing steps require that certain areas are defined on chip by appropriate masses. As a result, the integrated circuit may be viewed as a set of patterns layers of dupe silicon, polysilicon metals, and insulating silicon diode. Okay, a layer must be patterned before the next layers of material is applied on the chip. The process used to transfer a pattern to a layer on the chip is called photolithography. Since each layer has its own distinct patterning requirement, the lithography sequence must be repeated for every layer using a different mask. Okay, so this is the explanation for the photolithography process. Okay. Okay, uh, I see that our time is now 3 o'clock. Okay, uh, we should have a break uh, because uh, now it's already over one hour. Okay, we will take a break here. Uh, the break will be 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, I will continue with the next few slides. Okay, if you have any questions, you, have, you also can post your question here or, uh, or you can open your mic. Uh, to uh, let me know your uh, questions.
Uh, students, I want to uh, ask you, um, just now I have uh, update the attendance, all of your attendance. Can you all check in your apps uh, whether uh, you can see um uh, whether you can see your uh, the at your attendance has been updated or not okay i hope that the day is no issue i just want to make sure All right. Uh, thank you uh, for your uh, response. Okay, so uh, if all updated, then uh, that is good. Okay, if any issue, uh, just let me know. Okay, I will continue the class now. Okay, now uh, I will uh, further elaborate on all the steps that I have uh, covered just now. Okay, so all the basic steps, uh, they are about um, six to seven steps, okay, according to this slide. Okay, there are seven steps here. Okay, so uh, the descriptions are given here. Okay, so the first steps here, also uh, is to prepare the waffle. Okay, this is a figure 2.2. It illustrates the fabrication step involved in patterning uh, silicon dioxide through optical lithography. Okay, uh, the sequence starts with the thermal oxidization of the silicon surface by which an oxide layer of about one millimeter thickness is created on the substrate. So this one is the oxide layer. Okay, that is deposited on the silicon substrate. Okay, after the uh, oxide uh, layer is deposited, then the photoresist is also deposited on top of the oxide layer. Okay, so this is uh, the figure 2.2c. The description here is given as the entire oxide surface is then covered with a uh, layers of photoresist, which is essentially a light sensitive exit resistance organic polymer initially insoluble in the developing solutions. If the photoresist material is exposed to ultraviolet UV light, the exposed area becomes soluble so that they are no longer resistant to etching solvent. Okay, so uh, you see that this is the mass. Okay, uh, this mass again uh, is having uh, an area. This area is to expose to the UV light so that uh, the area that is, that is in the middle of the photoresist 
okay, is uh, soluble and it can be etched easily. Okay, um, so this one, as you see that this is the exposed photoresist. Okay, it becomes soluble. Okay, to selectively expose the photoresist, some of the area on the surface have to cover with a mask during exposure. In the area where the UV light can pass through, the photoresist is exposed and becomes soluble. Okay, figure 2.2e shows that uh, following the UV exposure steps, the exposed, the unexposed portions of the photoresist can be removed by a solvent. Now, the silicon oxides, the silicon dioxide regions that are not covered by hardened photoresist can be etched away either by using a chemical solvent or using a dry edge. Okay, a dry edge is called as the plasma edge process. Okay, figure 2.2F shows that an oxide windows that reach down to the silicon surface is obtained. Okay, these are the figure that it shows that after the uh, oxide layers, uh, not the oxide layers, this is the photoresist. Okay, the photoresist has been etched away. Okay, after the photoresist has been etched away, after it becomes soluble, then uh, followed by the oxide layer. Okay, oxide layer also need to be etched away. Okay, so this uh, is the windows of after uh, this is the windows after the oxide layer has been etched away okay uh, and then okay so uh, you see that uh, the silicon dioxide region that are not covered by hardened water research can be etched away either by using a chemical solvent so another chemical solvent will need to be used to etch the oxide layers away. Okay, the remaining photoresist can now be stripped from the silicon dioxide surface by using another solvent, leaving the pattern silicon dioxide features on the surface as shows in figure 2.2G. Okay, this is figure 2.2G. Okay, so uh, the photoresist here, initially there is a photoresist. Okay, uh, this is the photoresist. So in this figure, 2.2G, there is no more photoresist. It has been etched away using another uh, solvent. The process step in figure 2.2 accomplish a single pattern transfer onto the silicon dioxide surface. The fabrications of semiconductor devices require several such patterns transfer to be performed on silicon dioxide, polysilicon and metal. Okay, so just now is uh, the basic steps of uh, the basic steps uh, that is uh, to be performed in the fabrication process. Okay, now is the fabrications of the NMOS transistors. Okay, NMOS transistor, the fabrications process is the same. Okay, it's the same with the one that is uh, shown in the previous slide. Okay, uh, just that uh, for NMOS transistor, the diffusion area that need to be took is the n-type uh, dupens. Okay, is the n-type dupens. Okay, so this... Uh, these fabrications of the NMOS transistors, uh, you can uh, revise back of the steps here. Okay, the process starts with the oxidizations of the silicon substrate in which a relatively thick silicon dioxide layer, also called field oxide, is created on the surface. Okay, so the same first steps. Then the field oxide is selectively etched to expose the silicon surface on which the most transistor will be created. Okay, uh, in the figure 2.4 here, as I see that uh, it does not show the first step uh, where the 
oxide layers is deposited. Okay, this one is actually uh, the one that is after the silicon di uh, after the silicon dioxide has been etched away. Okay, with the area here in the middles exposed. Okay, to be uh, to be took. Okay, to be took. Okay, uh, the process of duping, uh, we call it as ion implantations. Okay, we plant it uh, with the uh, with dup. Uh, uh, we plant it with the dupants. Okay, so uh, so uh, if uh, following this figure two point four, so there is a thin oxide that has to be deposited. Okay, on top. Okay, so we follow this figure here. Okay, okay, this figure is uh, stated here in the statement. Okay, following these steps, the surface is covered with a thin, high quality oxide layers that will eventually form the gate oxide of the most transistor. Okay, uh, okay, let me have a look in the previous slide. Okay, so this one is the one that is with the silicon dioxide. Okay, and then the middle's area is edged away. And then further, okay, further uh, there is a thin oxide that is deposited. Okay, and then uh, this, mat uh, this step uh, has to be done in order to fabricate an NMOS transistor. Okay, so after a thin oxide is deposited on the silicon dioxide, okay, another metals called as polysilicon is also deposited on top of the thin oxide. Okay, after the deposition, the polysilicon layer is patterned and etched to form the interconnection uh, to form the interconnects and the most transistor gates. Okay, this is described for figure 2.4f, which is uh, this figure. Okay, so this is the polysilicon. Okay, after uh, it has been a uh, pattern. Okay, so of course, um, the patterning process has to use the mask. Okay, and then the UV light. Okay, um, so that the polysilicon can be etched away. Okay, so this polysilicon uh, is to form the gates, okay, the, to form um, the, this is an interconnect, okay, this is an interconnect that used to form the gate terminals uh, for the end transistors. The thin gate oxide not covered by silicon is also etched away, which exposes the bare silicon surface on which the source and drain uh, junctions are to be formed. Okay, this is 2.4G. Okay, here as you see that the thin oxide in this region okay, have been uh, have been etched away. Okay. Okay, and then uh, to etch this, uh, of course, um, they must have to use the solvent, okay, uh, have, have to use the solvents uh, to, etch, to etch away. Okay, if the oxide is hardened, okay, then we must have to use uh, some of the, as to have to, uh, we have to use the chemical solvent, okay, to uh, dissolve it in order to etch away. Okay, the entire silicon surface is then doped with a high concentrations of impurities, either through diffusions or iron implantations, in this case with donor atoms to produce n-type duping. Figure 2.4H shows that the duping penetrates the exposed area on the silicon surface, ultimately creating two n-type regions, source and drain junction, in the p-type substrate. The impurity dupings also penetrates the silicon on the surface, reducing its resistivity. 
Okay, so figure 2.4H, as you see that, uh, the thin silicon, uh, the thin oxide here is uh, edged away in order to uh, in order to uh, dupe with the dupens, okay, or dupe with the ion, okay. So for N transistors, the area here must be duped with N type dupen, okay, must be duped with N type dupens. Okay, this area here, two area is to form source and drain terminal. Okay, so I will write here. Okay, once the source and drain regions are completed, the entire surface is again covered with an insulating layers of silicon dioxide. Okay, so this one is the insulating dioxide. Okay, this layer. Okay, you see that this one is the insulating dioxide. Okay, the insulating oxide layer is then patterns to provide contact windows for the drain and source junctions. Okay, so as you see that, um, the silicon dioxide uh, on this region here has already edged away, okay, leaving only the layers here, okay, the two in these two side and then in this part, okay. So this part, uh, it is um, to provide the protections, okay? And also to provide the contact windows. Okay, the surface is covered with, okay, let me have a look. Okay, okay, after this, and then the next step is the surface is covered with an, elaborated aluminium which will form the interconnects okay so this black black part okay this is the aluminium okay this is aluminium we usually um, use it to uh, form the contact okay it can use to form contact Okay, sometimes we call it wires. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm not sure whether my pronunciation here is correct or not. Okay, uh, maybe uh, it is not called as wires or in there's other pronunciations, but uh, I just call it as wires. Okay, then uh, finally, the metal layer is patterned and H, completing the interconnects of the uh, most transistor on the surface. Okay, usually a second and third layers of metallic interconnects can also be added on top of these structures by creating another insulating oxide layer, cutting contacts, holes, depositings, and patterning the metals. Okay, so after each pro etching process, so this is how the metals context looks like. Okay, uh, the metal layer here is the aluminum. Okay, so that is the complete uh, processes of fabricating a uh, NMOS transistor. So uh, you need to understand uh, the process, okay, all the steps in the process. Okay, and then now, uh, the slide here given is the whole structures of the AMOS transistor uh, with the definitions of each of the part here. Okay, 
okay so uh, all of you you have know okay you know uh, what is the uh, the structures about and then uh, which one is the source and drain terminals and which one is the gate so i think all of you you start to know okay so um what i want to emphasize here uh from from this slide uh, you can see that um the feature size of the transistor can determine through the width and length okay the width and length of the transistor here is actually defined in this way okay you can see that in this figure this is l okay l is the length length of the transistor we usually define it as the um the length under uh, how to how should i say it okay it's actually the length between the um, source and drain okay or uh, let me think again okay the length here the length here uh okay for the nmos transistor okay we want to evaluate the size of the transistor we need to evaluate evaluate through the width and length so feature size is usually width over length okay width is this width okay this is the width of the transistor and length of the transistor is this length okay this length is defined as the length from the source to the drain or we also can say it from from the drain to source okay so the smallest of this length Okay, means that the feature size of the transistor is smaller. Okay, typically the length of the transistor is from 0 0.1 to 3 micrometer. Okay, and then the width is from 0 0.2 to 100 micrometer. And the thickness of the oxide layer, T or X, T here is the thickness. Okay, okay, for uh, my course, T here is the thickness. Okay, um, and then all X is the oxide. Okay, uh, sometimes um, T also mean time. Okay, but you need to see uh, if in the questions, T here is defined as the thickness, then you need to take note. Okay. So uh, this thickness of the excite layers is in the range of 2 to 50 nanometer. Okay, uh, for the NMOS uh, transistor, we can build it in 3D and also 2D. Okay, so this is the NMOS transistors. Um, the 3D wheels uh, from the electric VLSI software. Okay, uh, and this is uh, with the gate. Okay, uh, I'm not sure whether you still remember it or not. Uh, this one, okay, this is the layout design. Okay, layout design, and then we can wheel this layout design in a 3D. Okay, this is the 3D view okay and then uh, according to this uh, layout design this is nmos so there are gates drain and source okay and then this red color layers here this is polysilicon layers okay remember uh, polysilicon metals layers is always used to indicate as the gate Okay, and then this is the contact. Okay, contact ha has many types. This contact is the contact that to connect the polysilicon layers and the metal layers. Okay, the blue color layers here, this is the metals layer. Okay, and then this is ground. Okay, if we translate it in 3D wheel, this is the ground. Okay, this part, this whole part here is this part. 
Okay, this two is the drain and source terminal. This is the gate. Okay, and this is the polysilicon metal. Okay, and this is subtract. Okay, uh, this is not difficult to understand. Okay, this is the basics. So uh, you need to know the basics well only then uh, you can know how to uh, draw the design. Okay, and then for this course, uh, this course, um, you will have to design a little bit more complicated uh, circuit. Okay, you have to design uh, by drawing out the layout design for the combinational logic circuit based on the Boolean uh, functions given. Okay, so you need to understand it well so that you know how to draw the schematic and layout diagram using the electric VLSI software. Okay, so CMOS inverter again. This is a CMOS inverter. Okay, this is the schematic diagram. Okay, sometimes uh, I will also call it as a transistor level diagram. Okay, if you see that, uh, uh, if I say transistor level diagram, so it means that this diagram, the diagram with the NMOS and PMOS transistors, okay? I will call this diagram as either schematic diagram or transistor level diagram. Okay, and then layout diagram uh, will be this diagram, okay, with all the layers here. Okay, this one is the inverter cross-sectional view. So this one I will skip because uh, this has already show you before okay uh, this is another diagram a schematic diagram okay uh, for CMOS inverter okay um, this one this one is draw with the present of the silicon wafer it show you how to relate the schematic diagram here on the left hand side okay uh, with this diagram Okay, this diagram is a uh, draw with all the wheel, P wheel and N wheel and also the substrate. Okay, you can see the uh, relationship here uh, of this uh, CMOS inverter in different representations. Okay, um, okay, this one is the same one. It's the same diagram with this one, except this, this is draw with more details. Okay, uh, the details here given is uh, the uh, which part is the subtract and which part is the source, okay, source terminals, okay, this is the source terminals, okay, this is um, highlight in red color, okay, means that this area is the diffusion area, okay, and also this is with diffusion area, and then this is gate. So in between here, this layer here is the insu is the insulating uh, oxide, okay, insulating dioxide. Okay, and then here is the drain, okay, the drain here, drain terminals for PMOS and MOS, and then they are connected to the output terminal, okay, and then also the source, okay, source uh, is connected to the ground. Okay, this is uh, NMOS, this is the PMOS. Okay, so uh, this is again the CMOS inverter that show you the top wheel and then the side wheel and then how um, uh, the all the layers look like in the CMOS inverter. Okay, uh, the top view here, as you see that all this layer is actually formed by using the mass. Okay, all the masses here uh, are with different pattern. Okay, the masses uh, are the masses used for fabricating the gates and then uh, the metals, okay, uh, the, met uh, the metal layers, the masses that is used to uh, form the metals 
layer pat uh, to form the patterns on the metal layer. Okay, so that uh, it can be used as a contact. Okay, so you see this. Uh, this is input. Okay, input. So we can know that this is the polysilicon layers. Okay, this one is a polysilicon layers because it is connected to the input. Okay, and then this is to the ground. Okay, this is to the ground. Then we can know that there is a diffusion area here with the contact. Okay, this is the contact. And uh, this is a uh, source terminals with the contact here. Okay, the contact here can uh, connect these terminals to the ground, okay, through the metal layer. Okay, metal layers here is actually the wire. Okay, but in layout design, we call it as um, interconnects of the metal layer. Uh, sorry. It, we call it as interconnects, and then this interconnect is made of a metal layer. Okay, and then this is the source terminal. Okay, this is uh, the drain terminal. Okay, because uh, these two terminals is to the output. This is output. Okay, so after you understand, you can easily identify which one is terminal, which one is gate. Okay, and then uh, this is the CMOS inverter. This is also uh, obtained from the uh, electric VLSI software. Okay, we can use the VLSI software to design the CMOS inverter in this way. Okay, so this is a top wheel. And then um, we can also get it in a 3D wheel. So you can imagine, okay, uh, from these two diagram, okay, you can also relate it. Uh, which one is the terminal, which one is the gate. Okay, uh, this is also not difficult to understand. Okay, um, for this diagram, right, I want to add something here. Uh, there is a PMOS and MOS. Okay, um, here this is the wheel. Okay, this is the end wheel. Remember, this is end wheel. Okay, and then this is the P wheel. Okay, P wheel always connect to the NMOS. Okay, the active area of NMOS. Okay, this part, this part is the P, uh, not P, is the N, N active. Uh, sorry. And this one is the N active with contact. Okay, you see the black color, black color here. This is contact. We call it as N active. Okay, this is called as P active. Okay, only the P active can connect to the wheel. Okay, so in 3D here, this is the P wheel, this part. Okay, and this part is the N active. Okay, same also for these two. This is P wheel, uh, this is N wheel, this is P active. Okay, and then all these are contact, the black color. The black color layers here are the contact. Okay, and then the blue color is the metal layer that are used as a interconnect. Okay. Okay, let me see how many more slides I want to cover. I see that we still have 10 minutes left. Okay, I think I still can cover a few more slides to finish off. Okay, 
Okay, so now uh, next slide is about the inverter mask set. Okay, so this is about the uh, mask with different patterns okay, uh, that are used to form the patterns on the uh, silicon substrate to form the inverter. Okay, so uh, according to a statements given here, transistor and wires are defined by masses. Okay, masses specify where the components will be manufactured on the chip. Substrate must be tied to ground and envious to VDD. Use heavily duped well and substrate contacts. Okay, so all the masses are uh, displayed here, uh, actually present to you here. Uh, these masses, okay, you see that uh, this is the pattern of the mask to fabricate and in wheel and well, okay. And then for polysilicon, this is how the shape looks like in CMOS inverter. And then for the end diffusions, okay, so this is the regions where end diffusions, okay, so this one uh, show you the patterns of the end plus diffusions. Okay, and then uh, other more is P plus uh, diffusions, contacts, and metals. Okay, this is the patterns uh, for uh, all the uh, metal layers. Okay, so overall, uh, in the set of a mass, in the set of this mass, there are six masses. Okay, for use to uh, form the patterns of the end wheels, polysilicon, and plus diffusions, P plus diffusions, contact and metal. Okay, then a set of components. Okay, so this one um, uh, is the ones that I mentioned uh, uh, for the, uh, for, uh, for the mat, uh, uh, Okay, just now I mentioned uh, about the CMOS inverter. I show you so which one is the metal layer, which one is the polysilicon layers, right? Okay, uh, so this one, this slide shows all the layers, okay, and components that can be used to form uh, the circuit in electric VRSI software. Okay, so... You use the software before, so I think all of you you are familiar with this, okay? Uh, so all these are the uh, metal layers, okay? Met metal one, two, three, and four. All of these metal layers can use to uh, form the interconnects, okay? And then if you want to uh, use the NMOS and PMOS transistor to form a logic gate then we can use this PMOS and NMOS, okay? And then uh, with contact, then we need to use the N active and P active, okay? This uh, P, -mo P active and N active, we call it as active area, okay? Active area with the contact, okay? So this active area of the contact, we, uh, this active area with the contact, must be connect to the PMOS and MOS, okay, so that they can operate well, okay, and then P will and N will, okay. So for this one, all this is actually contact, okay, contact, contact. Uh, is to connect two interconnects together at terminals. Okay, the, the contacts here can be polysilicon con, uh, connects to the metal or metals to connect with another metal. Okay, so uh, uh, in this course, you will also need to uh, learn this again and use this to design a combinational logic circuit. Okay, so this one uh, is the definitions for all the components given in the electric VLSI software. Okay, so all this I think uh, I don't need to uh, explain again because it has already uh, mentioned in the previous slide. This is uh, just uh, for you to have easy reference.
Okay, for what is the layers and the components about? Okay, so this is all the slides that is for today. Okay, uh, before we dismiss the class, there are a few things that I want to uh, let you know. And also I want to check with you. Okay, uh, there are, okay, one announcement. Okay, I have one announcement here. Okay, next week, uh, Monday, uh, the lecture and tutorial class as well as the practical class is still on. Okay, please take note. Okay, next Monday, our class still on. So you still need to attend the class. Okay, and then on Wednesday, uh, all the class will be cancelled. Okay, uh, because uh, Wednesday is a Chinese New Year. Okay, so there will be no class, uh, no need to attend the class. I will replace back the class. So uh, please make sure that uh, you, you don't attend the class. Okay, I, I think uh, uh, no one will want to have a class, right? Okay, uh, so please remember. And then uh, for the replacement class, uh, I want to make it in week four. Okay, week four, um, I have already checked your timetable. Okay, your course, uh, course rep has given me the timetable. And then I uh, will make the replacement class for practical and lecture class on Friday in week four. Okay, I will make it in the morning. Okay, from um, nine to one. 9 to 1 o'clock, 4 hours. Okay, if all of you no problem, I will proceed to request for replacement class to office. Okay. Um, uh, the reason why I need to request because uh, I will need to take your attendance. Okay. Uh, and then uh, after I request only, I will be able to update your attendance. If not, I will not be able to update your, att your attendance. Okay, I, I need to do the request, but I need to confirm whether all of you are okay with that. If okay, then I will make it on Friday morning from 9 to 1. Okay, that is for lecture and practical. Okay, and then for tutorial, we also have one tutorial replacements for group 1. Okay, I will make it on Thursday. Thursday, 3 to 4. Okay, later I will announce in Google Classroom or in the class after I have confirmed the replacement class with Office. Okay, uh, the time slot that I select is actually available for all of you to attend. So I actually think that there should be no problem. Okay, um, is it okay about the replacement class? Okay, uh, no response means uh, no issue. Okay, and then another thing is uh, the attendance. Okay, I got to know from the course rep, some of the students, uh, the attendance is not updated. Okay, uh, this is the attendance for the week one. I have checked in the systems. I have updated all the attendance. Okay, uh, for this is for the lectures lecture in tutorial one okay uh they they are no tutorial in week one only lecture class so for all the lecture class i have updated all of your attendance in intranet okay there should be no issue 
Okay, but if you still have issue, you need to let me know. I, I'm not sure what is the problem. Okay, but I want to tell you here that I have uh, update all the attendance. Okay, and then for practicals and tutorial, the status that you see there is absent. Okay, uh, the status there you can just ignore. Okay, because uh, the attendance there is actually made change uh, by the office. Okay, I didn't change anything uh, for that. Okay, in the system. Okay, but you can just ignore because later I will inform the office uh, about uh, the about that. Okay, about the status of the first week of your tutorial. Because after you make the replacement class, then uh, the attendance, um, it will change, okay? The status will change. Okay, so now is already the time, okay, four o'clock. So I think there's nothing more I want to uh, discuss here. Okay, so I wish all of you happy Chinese New Year. Okay, and uh, we can dismiss the class now. Thank you to all of you.